Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Lawrence Training Academy, brought to you by Night and Day Marine. I am here again with my HDS-12 Live, and what we're going to cover today is I'm going to show you how to control and utilize your waypoints, routes, and trails. Now, these features are used for a variety of purposes. I'd say your waypoints are probably one of the most versatile features of the entire unit. So it's very important to know how to, uh, to set them, how to control them, uh, you know, how to manipulate, you know, edit, delete, uh, anything that has to do with them. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So just one thing I wanted to show you. So right now I'm looking at my sonar screen. Now, most of you guys have probably figured out how to set a waypoint on your chart. Um, but I've heard from some people that are having issues with doing it on their sonar. So what you can do is, so as you're scrolling across here, um, there's a couple things you can do. Now one, you can just press your flag button up here and it sets up a new waypoint. Now what's gonna do is it's just gonna set a waypoint at its earliest position here, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna tie the depth of right where you're at to that particular waypoint. Now on my other video, I showed you how to go through and set all of these. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it again though. So as you're gonna notice, you have some different options here. The first one is gonna be the waypoint name. Now, if you click on it, it gives you the option to come in here and change the name to whatever you want. So you can either hit the X right up here, which will delete all of them, or you can hit the X right here to go back one at a time. As you notice, I went back one. If I hit here, it deletes them all. Now also, you have the little ABC down here, what that does is it sets everything to lowercase. So that way everything doesn't have to be in uppercase letters, you know, so it doesn't look like someone's yelling at you whenever you're setting a waypoint. Um, but what we can do is we're just going to say we're testing the waypoint. I'm going to hit enter. Now on the next one, it's going to be the coordinates. So from here, you probably don't really need to manually adjust them since you're setting a waypoint on exact position. Um, but if you really wanted to change them, you can click on it and then you can go through by pressing your arrow buttons and then you can type in whatever the coordinates are. When you're done, you hit OK. Now over here is you have your more options. What that's going to do is when we click on it, it takes us deeper into uh, the waypoint. So it gives us the option to still we can change the icon and color like you saw before. But you can also go in here and click on to where you can show where it, both the name and the icon on the screen, or you can set it to where it's just the icon only, or you can make it hidden. But all intensive purposes, I'm going to uh, set just the display icon and name. Now it's also going to show you what the depth is. Now you could click on it and manually change it to another depth if you really wanted to. And then also you have your alarm radius where that's if so, um, if you set, if you're traveling to that particular waypoint, so let's say I, I go into my list, I select it as a go-to. Whenever I get within the distance I set here, it'll set it off in a, a radius alarm, let me know that I'm within range of that waypoint. Now I can also click over here where it says notes in this empty box, and it brings up to where I can type in any kind of notes about the waypoint that I want to put in. So I can exit back out. Now when I'm done, I can hit save, and now it's saved that waypoint right where I was at. Now I can also, when we go back in, I press my flag button, comes back up. Now you see where there's a little icon here. I can click on it and it gives me a big old list of different icons that I can pick from. I'm going to just choose this nice little fish. And then I have the color wheel here where I can choose the different colors between those different icons. Just kind of helps you customize it a little bit more. Now the last one on here is going to be this little box. Now when I click on it, you're going to notice that it's going to show me all these different icons in a bigger form. Now what this is, is instead of it taking me to that window, so let's say I just click on one. What it's going to do is it's going to quickly set the waypoint to it. But when I press my flag again to set another waypoint, it's going to take me right back to the screen so that I can just quickly click on the icon I want and it saves it in that spot again. It's just kind of a quick um, access to setting waypoints. Now, if I'm done with that and I want to be able to go back, I can click on the little box down here with the four white lines and it takes me back to the original screen. Now, when I'm here, obviously, I can save or cancel. I'm just going to hit save. Now, the other option while you're on the screen is you can tap on it like this and bring up your crosshairs. Now, let's say there's a big cluster of fish somewhere on here. So let's say, or there's a good uh, 
um, bit of structure. I can click on it like that, and then I can go over here and hit new waypoint. And then what it does is it's gonna set a waypoint at that exact position, and it's actually even gonna save the depth of it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And also right over here, we see this number, that's telling me what the depth is at that particular uh, point that I touched on. So that's really just how you save the waypoints on here. And then when you're done, you can hit your clear cursor and it sets you back to exactly where you're really uh, supposed to be on your sonar screen. Uh, but I just wanted to go over that real quick. Now let's go into our actual waypoints, routes and trails screen. So to do that, we're just gonna press our pages button up here, click it. And then over on the left here, we're gonna click on waypoints. Now this is our actual control screen for the waypoints, routes and trails. You're gonna notice at the top where we have waypoints, routes and trails tabs. Now here you can take it and you can scroll up and down to view all the different waypoints. And you'll see down at the bottom that there's some different options. I can click new to save a new waypoint and manually put in uh, my coordinates if I want. I can click on sort. And what it'll do is it'll sort out my list of waypoints by name, by the nearest, or by symbol. I'm just gonna say name. Now here I can delete all by just a specific symbol. So let's say I've saved everything as just one particular type of fish or one particular type of structure. I can go in and just delete those if I chose to. Or you can also hit delete all where it deletes all of your waypoints, but be careful in doing that because it will delete everything and they're not recoverable unless you back them up to an SD card which I showed you on a different video how to do. And then also you can go in and hit find. So let's say I click on this one here. Now you see whenever I go into it, I also have a show and a go to. Now, um, the difference between those is showing is it's gonna just view it on the screen and allow you to see it where it's at. Go to is gonna draw a navigation line to that point. But let's say if I wanna go and hit find here, it's gonna let me type in a specific waypoint that I want to find on there. So let's say if I just hit test, I hit enter, it's going to show me everything that has those letters in that particular word for the waypoint. So it's just kind of, so for some people, they may have thousands of waypoints listed and they don't want to scroll through the whole thing to try and find just one specific one. They can click find and then they can type in the name of it and it pulls it right up. It's just kind of a way to quickly search uh, for specific waypoints. Now, um, you can also go in, like I said, if we click on a specific one, it takes you to that screen, like I showed you before, uh, where you can go through and you can set the, the depth, the radius, uh, just basically anything that you want to set on that particular waypoint. And like I said before, you can either show it or go to. So like right here, I'm going to hit show. And that takes me and it shows me that exact waypoint on the map. Or I can go back in and I can select one. And then if I hit go to, let's see, I'm gonna say I'm gonna continue navigating. Now let's zoom in. Now as you can see, it drew a line from my spot to that particular waypoint. So it's just a navigation line on there. Now, of course, if you ever do that, you need to go in and click on your navigation right here and then hit cancel when you're done. So that removes it right off the screen. Now let's go back in. Let's go into our waypoints. And so that's really about it for just the waypoints. Uh, they're really easy to control, manipulate. Um, so that just, you know, like I said, it, you can go through, you can look at them. Um, it's just a nice little list that you can have on there. Now the next one is gonna be your routes. Now when you click on here, you kind of have similar features. You have new, you can delete all, or you can find a specific one. Now let's start here. You can click new, and that goes to create a new route on the screen. Now you can say, I wanna create on chart or I can create using a route list. Now, if I hit create on chart, what that's gonna do is it's gonna take me back to my chart here. And then all I have to do is just tap on the screen and it creates the various legs of the waypoints. And see, it just draws it out for you, real simple. And when you're done, you can just hit save and then name it. And you can type in whatever you want and when you're finished, just press enter. And then it saves uh, that route to the screen. And then we can go back in. We can select waypoints. We go back to our routes. Now the next one 
is if we hit new, we can create using a route list. Now, if we select that, this is gonna take us a little bit deeper into the route. And from this screen, basically what it allows you to do is it's gonna let me choose individual waypoints that I've already created uh, to set the route. And so what you do is you're gonna notice like there's a real fine line box right here. It's kind of hard to see, but if you click on it, it lights it up. And then what you can do is you can select insert right here, and then it brings up your waypoint list. It can go through and you can set whatever waypoints that you wanna set. So then you just click on the next one, you can insert it. And then let's say I wanted to go to number seven, I can click on it, I can insert, and I can keep doing that for as many different waypoints that I wanna to add to it. And then when I'm done, I can just hit save. Now you can also go in, you can click on here to change the name, or if you want it to be able to display or not to display, you can turn it on or off from right there. But then when you're done, you gotta make sure that you hit save so that way it sets it into there. So now we can see that we have our Route 4 that we newly created. Uh, the same thing applies as on the other screen where you can click find right here and then we can type in a specific route. If you had so many routes on there that you didn't know which one was which, you can just type it in and it'll take you right to it. Um, so that's really about the routes. Routes are actually really simple to set um, on this unit. Uh, now, you also have some cool features like if you're using a Navionics card or certain CMAP cards. So with, um, so for example, the Navionics cards, uh, they have a feature called auto routing. And what it does is so you can go in and you mainly choose the various legs of where you wanna go. And when you're done, you'll notice instead of hitting right above where it says save, you're gonna be able to select auto route. What it'll do is it'll kind of take your uh, the little waypoint legs that you set and maneuver them around so that it creates a safe path of travel around various, uh, you know, to create a path that um, you're able to actually travel. So let's see, because um, as you noticed, the, the when you create the uh, legs on it, it just draws a straight line in between them. We we'll navigate those lines around, let's say, uh, pieces of land or structure that may be on the chart. Uh, so that way it just creates a uh, path that, like I said, is safe for you to travel, especially if you're using like a um, an autopilot. You don't want it to take you into land, so you can do that uh, auto routing feature. And so that way it takes you around so that, you know, it keeps you safe. Uh, the same thing applies for the, the CMAP maps, but it's actually called easy routing, but it's the exact same thing. Um, but we'll go over that on another video. I'll show you how to set that up. Now, the last option is going to be trails. Now we set our trails here. Now on here, we have a couple options, um, kind of the same things where you had your delete all, you can find, but you have a new option down here that says settings. Now when you click on it, what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to set your logging type. Now the unit's gonna default to auto. So basically about every five seconds or every so far of a distance that you travel, it's gonna create a, uh, a breadcrumb marker basically uh, on the screen. So uh, the shorter of a time period, the more smooth the trail will actually be, but it creates a lot more points. So these units have a maximum amount of points that they can set per trail. And they say it's 24,000, but in reality, it's gonna stop at around 23,990, some odd around that. And what happens is when you hit that point, it will keep recording the trail. So it'll keep adding to the end of it, but it'll start deleting the beginning part of that trail. And so let's say, you're out all day long and you start maxing out your trail each day. Well, if you don't want that to happen or you don't want to have to constantly keep going in and creating a new trail, what you can go do is instead of leaving on auto, you can select it and you can choose either distance or time. What I like to do is choose the time. And then instead of having five seconds, I can go and set it at 10 seconds. And so by doing that, that's going to double the length of time that I can actually use to record a single trail. However, you will notice that your trail might not be quite as smooth. It might be a little more jagged um, on it. But like I said, it if you are running out of trail points each day, doing that will increase it and actually make it twice as long so that you that won't happen. Uh, like I said, you can also do the same thing for distance. But to me, the distance is actually uh, a little less useful because you as you'll notice that I can only shrink it down so far, and this is miles. So it's basically saying for every 1.15 miles, it leaves a marker. Well, that's basically pretty useless. And so I can go in and I can drop it down, 
but the lowest it's going to let me put it is 0 0.5 miles. Well, that's still a pretty far distance in between each breadcrumb, so that's why I don't really care for using it. I'd rather use the time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. Now also you'll see where you can hit new trail. So if I select it, that's going to create a new trail on the screen. Now when I create a new trail, it's going to create a trail 002. And on the previous active trail, you're going to see that the display will stay on, but the record's going to stop. It's going to go to off. But on my new trail, it'll say on. That's because it's going to stop recording to the previous trail, and it'll start recording on the new one. As you'll see, when I hit new trail, it brings up my trail options here. Now I can go in, I can click on it, and I can change the name to whatever I want. I'm just going to leave it where it's at. I can click on the little squiggly line here. What that does is it allows me to choose the color of my trail. Or I can choose to display that trail. Or if I want to not record it and I just want to be able to display it only, I can turn it on or off here. You can also type in a description for your trail for whatever you want, any kind of notes. And then when you're done, you can hit save. And now, like I mentioned before, it turned off the recording from the previous trail and added it to trail two. Um, that's really about it. Now, there's one other feature you can do. When I set on here, you can actually create a route. And so the Lorentz units don't allow you to navigate a trail uh, with your autopilot, but it will allow you to, uh, to you know, follow a route with the autopilot. So you can take a trail that you've made and you can select create route. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a whole bunch of individual little small legs, little bit tiny waypoints, not too far apart from each other, into a route. And now, like, say, if I hit show, you can see it's going to leave like a whole bunch of little markers on here. Well, actually, let's go back so I can show you a little bit better. Come on here, I click route. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit start. I, and I can go either forward or reverse. So that means I can start the trail from the beginning or from the end. I'm just going to say I'm going to start from the beginning. And as I zoom in, um, it's going to actually navigate me from point to point to point on there. And so, like I said, I can use my, uh, my autopilot to navigate that actual trail. Now, it will be a little bit more jagged. It won't be quite as smooth as what a trail will show you, but it makes it very usable. Um, I find that a lot of people like to be able to use that because uh, I know a lot of guys who will navigate through very narrow pathways that aren't very safe to travel. And so they have to be very careful to follow that trail back um, when they're heading back in. And, you know, it may be dark or, I mean, you know, they may be busy or tired. And so they want to be able to set their autopilot to travel it back. Well, you can't do that unless it follows the trail very specifically. Well, by converting your trail into that route, it allows you to do that. Let me go back here. And so uh, that's basically everything that there is uh, with the waypoints, routes, and trails. Um, I showed you guys how to back them up on a different video. Um, well, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys learned something. Um, like I said, they're really easy to use. Um, you know, this is probably one of the more uh, used uh, features um, on the displays. Um, and again, remember to back up your waypoints and trails regularly. Uh, very important that you do that. I don't want to see you guys lose all of your information because something happened to your unit. But all right. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it below and hit the subscribe button and the little bell. This will allow you to get notifications every time I release a new training video for your favorite Lawrence product. Also, I wanted to give you guys some really exciting news. We will have our very own website pretty soon. LawrenceTrainingAcademy.com. It's going to have even more of your favorite in-depth, comprehensive training videos, so keep an eye out. Of course, I'll be sure to let you all know along the way when it will be up and running. And don't forget, when you watch videos from Lawrence Training Academy, the difference is night and day. Alright, I'll see you all next time.